Did you know that you can apply an effect to all of the cuts at once by dragging the effect to the main clip? To adjust the effect, go to the effect controls panel, click on the source clip, and then change the settings there. That was actually a bonus tip, so let's continue with 10 Premiere Pro tricks I bet you didn't know. Let's say you have a 4K timeline and you have 1080p footage, or of course the other way around. Every time that you drag a clip onto the timeline, you would have to resize it. Now you might think, ha, Leela, I know the answer to this. I will right click on that clip and then click on set to frame size. Smart, but I can do you one better. Go to preferences, media and default media scaling. Now change this from none to set to frame size and now you will never have to rescale your clips again. Nothing is more annoying than not being able to place the music or a sound effect exactly where the action is happening in the video. Whatever you do, doesn't matter how close you zoom into the timeline, you can only move it frame by frame. So here's what you'll do. In your sequence window, click on the hamburger menu and then show audio time units. Now you'll see that the numbers up here have changed. Grab that song or sound effect and you'll see that you can move it around freely. Let's stick with audio a bit longer. Now, when you're using background music and you've created keyframes to lower the music when you're speaking and to increase the music when you're not, and then you decide, hmm, I actually wanna use a different song or I wanna use a different part of the same song. Now you have to reposition those keyframes or you have to delete them and you have to create them again. Those days are over because I'm going to show you a hidden feature. This song right here is from Mixkit. It is a great free resource for creators where you can get 4K stock video, music, sound effects, and video templates for, for example, Premiere Pro and After Effects completely for free. There will be a link in the description if you want to check them out. To avoid spending a lot of time on repositioning all of those keyframes or creating all of those keyframes again and again and again, we're going to double click on this track right here to make it bigger and then click on this icon right here that says show keyframes. Then click on track keyframes and then volume. Now press P to create the keyframes on the timeline. And as you move the music track around, you will see that the keyframes are fixed. This is super helpful if you wanna swap songs or if you wanna move them around later in your edits. If you've ever wondered how people get their animations to look so sleek and smooth and yours just looks really linear, here's how to do it. In the effect controls panel, select your keyframes, right click and then click on bezier. Bezier, Bezier, Bezier. We're going for French. If you're animating the position, for example, you won't see this option. So in that case, go to temporal interpolation and click on Bezier. Now, here's a trick I bet you didn't know. You know, when you have added a lot of subtitles or text to a video, you send it to your client and then your client comes back and is like, looks great, but can you change the font? Actually, you don't need to lose your mind because Premiere Pro has a feature built in that allows you to replace the text all at once of every single text layer. Go to graphics and titles, replace font in projects. Now select the font that you want to replace, choose the font that you want to replace it with, hit okay, and you're done. <sighs> Confession time. Raise your hand if you've ever worked on a project where you didn't neatly organize every single file you've imported to Premiere Pro and you save the project. A year later, you open that project and all of the files are missing because you didn't organize them. Come on, raise that hand. I know it. I know you did this once. Don't leave me hanging here. I've been there and I found a fix and I'm very happy to share that with you now. Go to the project manager, collect files and copy to a new location. Choose your destination folder, then make sure you check unused clips and hit okay. All right, the next trick involves pancakes. Here's the scenario. You're starting a brand new edit. You've just imported all of the clips into your project bin and now you need to go through all of the clips, which can be quite time consuming and quite a hassle. Instead of selecting the clips from the bin, we're going to create what's called a string out. Select all of the clips in your project bin, then right click and then click on new sequence from clip. This is our string out. If you want, you can rename it and you can call it string out, but I'm just going to leave it like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it in between the program monitor and the sequence. Now a new timeline will be visible right here where we can easily sort through the clips and then just drag them onto the main timeline. Let's actually take a quick look at that timeline. When you click around and move the playhead, the clip underneath isn't automatically selected, which is such a pain in the peach when you're editing. So to change this, go to sequence in the top menu and then click on selection follows playhead. 
If you are a very organized editor, which I really hope that you are, although I do think that we earlier established that we're not, but we're just going to pretend that we are, and maybe you are. Good for you, good for you if you are. If you are a very organized editor or an aspiring organized editor and you have put the files neatly into bins, it can get quite cluttery when you open up all of those bins. Because when you open these bins, they will all open up right here. Now to make things way easier and uncluttered, next time you're going to open up a bin, hold control or command and double click on the bin. You're welcome. All of these tricks so far have blown my mind in my editing career at some point, so let's keep going. Finding the right song that fits your video perfectly is quite a challenge. Now finding the right song that also fits the duration of your video is even more challenging. The Premiere Pro team knows this and they have added a magical feature to Premiere Pro. Go to your toolbar, click and hold this ripple edit tool and then click on remix. Now extend or shorten the song to the desired length and watch Premiere Pro do its magic. Since we started this video with a bonus tip, I feel like it's only fair if we end this video with a bonus tip as well. Now the next bonus tip is to watch this video right here to really level up your editing. And of course, make sure that you hit subscribe and let us know in the comments which of these tricks blew your mind.